This entire self-sorting piggy bank was made using my desktop CNC machine. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make one yourself. Let's jump into it. For the past few months, I've been working on this piggy bank within SketchUp, trying to design not only a functioning coin separator, but also one that's made up of components that can be carved using a desktop CNC machine. This is the final design I've settled on, and because I've built this over and over again about 100 times in my head, I'm 95% confident that I can build this correctly on the first try. But I guess we'll find out if that's true within this video. If you're a woodworker, you may have stumbled upon a video in the past by Fisher's Workshop, where he made a coin separator that uses precisely measured pushpins to bump out coins based on their size as they roll down a ramp. My design will use that same method, but once separated, I added a series of channels that guide the coins into trays at the bottom, which can be individually removed if you ever save enough money to fill them up. To make things easier for myself, I ended up breaking down the design into six smaller components, which I labeled the main frame, the sorting ramp, the coin guides, the coin insert, the routing panels, and catch basins. Because of the way my brain works, I not only laid out all of the components, but I also organized everything into an extremely detailed PDF instruction manual, which I'll be following myself as I build this project. You can download and view this manual for free at the link in the video description, but if you want to build the project yourself, you will need to purchase the full version, which includes the corresponding SVG files that make up all of the components. The plans will walk you through not only material prep and assembly, but more importantly, will break down each component and tell you exactly what type of CNC toolpath to assign in order to make each of their parts. Honestly, I think I spent way more time actually making these build plans than I did designing this piggy bank, so at the very least, do me a favor and check them out. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. I really appreciate any support you're willing to give this channel. It doesn't cost anything and, well, it goes a long way to keep me motivated to keep making these videos. Anyway, let's get started on the first component, which is the main frame. The main frame is made up of seven different parts, three of which are carved on the CNC, and the other four are just rectangles made from walnut and maple. I really like the contrasting look of these two wood species, so in addition to some maple plywood and clear acrylic sheets, that's the material I'm going to stick with for this entire project. The reason I wanted to start with the main frame and not with any of the other components is because the side panels, which are made from that half inch plywood I mentioned earlier, are the main pieces that the rest of this project's components will fit into using mortise and tenon joints. You'll notice that the corners of the mortises already have pre-installed dog bones, and that's needed because CNC bits can't carve square inside corners. Having these pre-installed during the machining process will negate the need for any chiseling later on and allow my square edge tenons to fit in place perfectly. With the side panels off the machine, all I need to do is free them of their tabs using a multi-tool and then head over to the router table with a flush trim bit to remove them completely. Be careful while using a flush trim bit here because there is a section on the side panels that is pocketed out past the edge of the panel itself. Uh, and you'll notice right here I made a terrible mistake and plunged the bit into the side. Crap! I couldn't find a better way to fix this error, so I ended up just making a whole new side panel on the CNC. Uh, but once that was done, I could move on to adding some edge banding to cover up the nasty plywood sides. Once complete, I really want this piggy bank to look like a high-end furniture grade art piece, I guess if you want to call it. Uh, so covering the edges of the plywood with the edge banding is pretty necessary to make it not look, well, crappy. The next part of the main frame that gets carved on the CNC machine is what I'm calling the top crown slash bracket. This is actually a two part piece in one carve. Uh, so once it's off the machine and the tabs are flush cut, all you need to do is screw it together using three pan head screws. The last piece of this component that we need to make is what I'm calling a coin slot bracket. This is just a half inch piece of maple with four holes in it, which will be at the bottom of the side panels and the coins will pass through it before they come to their final resting place once everything is assembled. 
And with that cut, all the parts that make up the main frame are complete, and now I can show you exactly how to assemble and finish them. I ended up using my drum sander to remove a tiny amount of material from all the parts until they fit into the corresponding mortises within the side panels. After that, I took the two small walnut strips that I had cut earlier and glued one of them to the front of the coin slot bracket and another one to a non-CNC part, which I labeled the base panel. Once those were dry, I used some painter's tape to block off the edges of the tenon pieces as well as the inside of the mortises on the side panels so that I could apply a few coats of spray lacquer and not get it inside of the parts that will accept glue later on. I'm not going to go into any detail of varnish in this video because it's really boring, but everything came out nice and I was able to do a dry assembly of all of our parts. Keep in mind that I do not want to glue these pieces into the side panels at this stage of the project. With the main frame assembled and finished, we can now move on to component number two, the sorting ramp. This component has way less steps than the main frame since it's only made up of three parts called the main ramp, sorting cover, and push pins. This is also the first component I'll be making that uses acrylic in addition to walnut and maple, so in order to carve it correctly on the CNC, I will need to use a single O flute bit that's used for cutting plastics. The main ramp and push pins are carved using the same eighth inch down cut bit that was used on the main frame component, but in addition to that, I'll also need a sixteenth inch down cut bit used for pocketing out really small mortises on the main ramp. I'll take the same steps as before to remove the tabs and flush trim the sides, but when it comes to the push pins, using a router table to remove the tabs would just be too dangerous due to their size. Instead, I'll head over to my spindle sander and remove them that way. When it comes to carving acrylic on the CNC, I suggest that you use double-sided tape to hold down your workpiece. You can also add clamps on the side if you think it's necessary. Another good tip is to remove the plastic film that comes on top of the acrylic because if you forget and leave it on there, it will melt into your bit and really gunk it up. To remove the tabs from the acrylic, I again use my spindle sander, very carefully making sure not to scratch the plastic. I then dunked that part in some soapy water to remove any debris and tape residue, and this is what it should look like once it's done. After adding a few coats of lacquer to my parts off camera and letting them dry, I used CA glue to secure the push pins into place and then screwed in the cover after lining it up with the screw holes. With everything assembled, this component is complete, but of course I had to add it to my main frame dry assembly and test everything out. All right, so these are working really well, but obviously we need a way to catch the coins uh, so they don't just fall on the ground. So now let's move on to component number three, the coin guides. The coin guides are made up of three parts that will be assembled so that they catch the coins as they jump out of the sorting ramp. Again, using walnut, maple, and acrylic, we're going to carve two of these on the CNC, but as for the third part, the guide ramps, we will need to do what's probably the most amount of traditional woodworking that this project requires. I need to cut a 30 degree angle along one edge of this quarter inch piece of maple, but because my table saw only tilts to 45 degrees, I need to make a jig that rides along my fence in order to do that. If I turn the piece on its side and tape it to the edge of my jig vertically, I can run it through my blade that's tilted at 60 degrees and the leftover angle will be the 30 degree angle that I need. Once that angle is set, I can then cut the piece into four one and a half inch wide strips that should be able to fit through the holes on the sorting ramp. After I know that those fit, I break down the guide ramps even further into staggered length strips based on the measurements laid out within the build manual. Finally, in order to finish them, I measure half an inch in from the ramped side and drill holes on either side that will later be able to accept screws. When it comes to the CNC parts, the support brackets are cut from the same piece of acrylic that we used earlier, but this time I used a different method to secure it to my CNC. I didn't like how much tape residue was left the last time I used double-sided tape, so instead while cutting these out, I used painter's tape on both the waste board as well as the back of the acrylic, and then CA glued them together. This method does use more material, but it's certainly worth it in the end since there's just a lot less cleanup. 
The last piece of this component, the front covers, is the first piece in this project that's actually customizable. These pieces will be front and center on the piggy bank once it's all finished, so I thought I would add some flair by adding some coin denominations and names using epoxy. I designed the text and numbers that I wanted within my CAD program, and then pocketed out the areas using a 16th inch downcut bit, as well as a 1 32nd inch bit for the harder to reach areas. Once carved, I filled those voids with black epoxy, let it cure overnight, and then sanded everything flush using my drum sander. With my text installed on the front, I flipped the piece over, put it back on the machine, and then carved the mortises and cut out the overall shape of the pieces. Once again, I ended up sanding and finishing these off camera, but here's what the three pieces of this component look like once they're finished. Now let's move on to assembling them. In order to assemble these, start by securing the support brackets by very carefully dripping CA glue into the mortises on the back of the front covers. The most important thing to remember with the next step is to make sure that the smallest guide ramp is matched up with the smallest diameter coin, the dime. Continue that trend down the line until you reach the largest coin, the quarter, and the largest guide ramp. Once you're sure you have them lined up, add a small amount of glue to the support ramps and attach them to the front covers by lining up the screw holes. I decided to add a third screw in the middle of the support ramps for some added holding power, but this isn't really necessary. From there you can test fit them into the sorting ramp by inserting them into the corresponding mortises. Again, do not glue them in place at this stage. After some testing, I realized that the dimes were getting stuck every so often because their small size allowed them to get wedged in between the front covers and the sorting ramp. In order to fix this, I added a protruding screw into the back of the dime's front cover, which kind of disrupted the flow of the dime, and this seemed to fix my issue. With the coin guides installed and working properly, now let's move on to making the piece that brings the coin from up here into the sorting ramp. And that brings us to component number four, the coin insert. The coin insert is one of the most basic components within this project, made up of only two CNC carved parts and two identical rectangles made from walnut. The side brackets slash ramp cover are made from a piece of quarter inch maple and the coin ramp is made from half inch maple. The two walnut rectangles will be made from quarter inch stock and labeled as the angle guides. Compared to the parts that you've seen me make earlier in this video, there really isn't anything earth shattering when it comes to making these on the CNC. Both the side bracket slash ramp cover and the coin ramp should only take about seven to 10 minutes on the machine and only require the use of an eighth inch downcut bit. Once carved, I removed the tabs and sanded everything with my spindle sander before moving on to the first step of the assembly process, putting together the side brackets and angle guides. These two parts simply get glued together with a small amount of CA glue, and then from there everything gets finished with a few coats of lacquer, with the exception of this tiny little quarter inch rectangle, but I'll get to that in a second. Once dry, I'll install the ramp cover onto the coin ramp with three screws and assemble everything onto the top crown that's part of our main frame. When it comes to adjusting the coin ramp into its position, line up its slot into the middle of the angle guides so that the coins fall directly into it. When it comes to the small rectangle that I mentioned earlier, this part gets installed into the side panel and will guide the coins behind the sorting cover. It's designed to be too thick when it's first made so that you can sand it down and get the right size. As it stands, the coins can't slip past it between the acrylic so I used my belt sander to take a small amount of material off until the coins could slide through. The parts as they stand should be fully functioning, albeit they might be a little finicky because they move around, but don't worry about that because we will glue everything into place during the final assembly process at the end of this video. Once you're satisfied that things are working as they should, we can move on to component number five, the routing panels. This is probably the most complicated component within this project, not only because it requires the most amount of carves on the CNC at six, but also because the assembly process requires the most amount of steps. There isn't anything special about carving the parts on the machine compared to the other components we've made in this video, so I won't spend too much time showing you that process. 
Like our other parts, these pieces do use a 16th and 8th inch down cut bit to perform all the tool paths for the wooden pieces. And for the acrylic, we once again need to use a single O-flute bit. I want to jump directly into the assembly process, starting with the back panel and back guides, since this is where you'll get the most amount of value by watching this video. The back guides need to be glued onto the back panel in specific locations. So in order to do that, I cut a small amount of eighth inch dowel rod and use them as alignment pins. This will be a commonly used method for assembly while I'm building all the parts for this component, hence why there's so many small holes in all of our parts. Once the back panel and back guides are glued into place, I did start to add varnish to that piece as well as another part of our component, the support brackets, but I'll get to those in just a second. The front panel is where some more complicated assembly takes place since we do need to do some woodworking in order to make things run smoothly. We're going to start by gluing the front guides into place on the front panel by once again using alignment pins with the exception of this small piece on the bottom left corner. This part has a piece of acrylic that gets put underneath it, so we need to finish it separately and then glue it in place once it's dry. If we glued it in place and then sprayed it with lacquer, then we'd get lacquer all over our acrylic and it wouldn't look very good. So once the other front guides are glued in place, I'll finish everything at once by laying them next to each other and spraying them with varnish, including this little pinwheel. Once dry, I'll insert the acrylic into its place and then glue that place onto its designated location on the front panel. Next, I need to glue this tiny piece of quarter inch dowel into a hole on the front panel, making sure that only an eighth of an inch is protruding from the top. This will act as a little bumper for the pennies just to make sure that they stay on the right track, but it won't be visible once everything is assembled, so don't worry about too much how it looks. After that's done, we need to take this little deburring tool and do that woodworking I mentioned earlier. I'll link this tool in the video description, but if you don't have one, you can also use a sander, file, or chisel to get the same effect. Basically, we just need to shave away material behind the two holes that will corral the pennies and nickels to make sure that the pennies are guided to the back of the panel. Make as steep of an angle as possible here. Uh, I worked at this for a while, and this is what it ended up looking like once I was finished. With that done, we can now take those slot brackets that I mentioned earlier and glue them into their place on the front panel. There is a tiny piece of acrylic that gets inserted in between three of the four slot brackets, and it should be easy enough to figure out which is which, since the holes are specific sizes. Once the acrylic is inserted, take the largest slot bracket and insert it onto the right side where the quarters go, and then work your way down size by size until the smallest is where the dimes will go through. Finally, in order to finish the front panel, screw the front cover into place by lining up all of the screw holes. Now we can take the front panel and the back panel and add them together by lining up the slot bracket holes. Don't worry about how these are spaced, since once they're inserted into our side panels during the final assembly stage, everything will be aligned perfectly. At this stage in the project, we do have all the components we need to build a functioning coin sorter, but before we assemble everything, I want to make something to actually catch the coins at the bottom. So that brings us to our final component, component number six, the catch basins. Moving a bit faster now, since I know you want to see the final result, the catch basins are made of five CNC carved parts, but four of those are totally identical. Cut four pieces of quarter inch maple down to size, as well as one piece of acrylic, and you have everything you need to make this component. The piece you see carving on the machine right now will make the parts that make up one of our four catch basins, which are essentially just boxes. The CNC does all the work for cutting out the sides and bottom, and after some sanding, all you need to do is assemble the pieces. Leave this small piece off to the side as you assemble the parts, and repeat that process four different times until you're left with four boxes with open faces and tops. You can then lay all those parts out and finish them with varnish. 
When it comes to cutting the acrylic that will make the fronts of our boxes, I decided to use a spring-loaded drag bit to engrave pictures of the four different coins onto the front. I got these images off of Etsy, so I can't include them in the files that I have for sale, but I will post the shop where I bought them in the video description in case you want to add them yourself. This is really one of the few times I've ever tried engraving on acrylic, so I'm not going to claim that I'm any expert, but I do think that they came out pretty nice. Once etched, I just needed to cut out the shapes of our four fronts, and this is what we're left with. From there, I can take the acrylic and insert it into the slots in our four catch basins, and then glue that tiny little piece that we left off to the side onto the top to secure them into place. And the final result is our four finished catch basins. All right, so with all of our components finished, we can now move on to the final stages, which is assembling this project. So let's get to it. You'll see me here gluing together the mainframe, sorting ramp, and routing panels, but I do recommend doing one final dry assembly with all the finished components before adding any glue. This will allow you to fully test the function of all the parts and make any adjustments if you need to. I ended up making a few, which I'll show you now. Before gluing in the coin guides, I used that deburring tool from before to ramp down the back of the guide ramps to allow the coins to slide a little bit smoother. I also decided to remove that center screw I added for stability since it wasn't really necessary and it was sometimes holding up the coins. When it comes to the coin insert, after I adjusted everything and glued it into place, I added a small hole into the top so I could nail it down and really make sure it never moved. Another thing I added was for the pinwheel, which was sometimes moving too far off the surface of the routing panel when it spun. I ended up drilling a hole through the center of a dime and using it as sort of a locking pin by gluing it in place after pulling the pinwheel tight. This holds the pinwheel closer to the routing panel and seems to work just fine. After all of our components were glued into place, I added our catch basins and locked them into place using that lock bar. And finally, in order to finish this project, I added every woodworker's favorite feature, a French cleat on the back so I could hang it on the wall. And with that, we're finally finished and here is the final result. This thing is really cool. I'm really happy with how it came out. There are a few kinks. Sometimes the coins get stuck, but if you just tap it on the side or just drop more coins in, everything seems to break free. Uh, so yeah, really no huge issues here. And for the first time building this, I couldn't be happier. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.